Dave Delsing spent 25 years on the PGA Tour and is a lifetime member of the PGA Tour and PGA of America. Now he provides his unique perspective as a golfer and network broadcaster. It's time to go on the range with Jay Delsing. Hey, good morning. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. I'm your host, Jay Delsing. Pearly was with me. Good morning, Pearly. What's going on? You, you know what I mean? He just said to follow him. I did that in college. I did that in many tours. I did that when I was caddying. <laughs> Every time it bit me in the butt. So are you going to do it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we formatted this show like Around the Golf. Our first segment is called the On the Range segment. Um, we want you to check out our social media uh, outlets. Twitter is at Jay Delsing. Facebook is Golf with Jay Delsing. Jay Delsing Golf. Hospitality. LinkedIn is Jay Delsing. And Instagram, we don't know what it is. We want to thank Bob and Kathy Donahue at Donahue Painting and the Finishing. Best. For, uh, for supporting the show again this year. 314-805-2132. Pearly, 2020 is gone. Is gone. Thank goodness. Everybody stand up and cheer. Man, I'm telling you. Party. Nobody, nobody is mad about that. We got a best of show, and this is really cool. We've had some really fun, super people on this show. Absolutely. And up first, so here's our list that we're going, our our list is going to be Valentino Dixon is coming out of Hopper first. Great story. Yes. And John Hewlett, who is just super jock, uh, a disc jockey and uh, all around great guy in St. Louis. And we've got uh, Ozzy Smith and Adam Long. We've got uh, and then Ted Scott, who's Bubba Watson's caddy, and the great Bob Costas. So Sweet. let's jump into this first Interview with Valentino Dixon. The best of 2020 is brought to you by Golden Team. The jury came back and found me guilty. They gave me 39 years. I found myself in Attica prison, which is, you know, oh, one of the worst prisons God. in America. And, you know, for the first seven years, I didn't draw that at all, you know, and so my uncle sent me some art supplies, and he says, if you can reclaim your talent, you can reclaim your life. And so I just started drawing, and he says, hey, man, you may have to draw yourself out of prison. The evidence is there, but authorities is not acknowledging it. So you may have to draw yourself out of prison. I didn't know what he was talking about. I started drawing every day. My, my spirit started getting stronger. Then the whole time God was with me, I didn't understand it or, or know God, uh, but he was with me. And... I was always sort of educated, so I would help guys learn their GD. You know, I went to college in prison. You know, I was, you know, just basically a counselor in there for other people. And, you know, I went to performing arts high school for artwork, so I already had the skill. But I hadn't used it in, in ne- nearly eight or nine years. And so I started drawing every day, every day, every day. And this was invigorating my spirit and making me feel better. And in comes one here comes the board in one day says, hey, Valentino, could you draw my favorite golf hole? You know, because I had, by then, I had become known as the artist in Attica. I had 20 years in prison. And I said, sure, even though I never golfed before, I'm a black kid from the inner city. What do I know about golf? You kidding me? Like, how is this, you know, we, we don't, we're not introduced to anything like this. Basketball, football, that's it. So I drew it, the picture for him, the 12th hole of Augusta. He loved it. He was elated. And my neighbor, another guy that used to golf, a white guy, he said, hey, Valentino, you need to draw some more golf holes. I said, Adam, you must be kidding me. I'm not drawing any more golf holes. Get out of here. And he tossed some old golf dice and just magazines on my bed. So, all right, eventually I started going through them because I did enjoy drawing the 12 holes. I mean, that bridge is iconic. The flower scene, it was different. It was more than a golf, a golf hole. And so I started going through the magazine. So I start pulling out the different, because he gave me a bunch of old issues. He said, you don't want them, toss them out. So I start pulling out all the nice golf courses that I thought was nice, you know, because some of them, you you know, are shabby. But so, yeah. So, <laughs> I know all about those shabby ones, bro. I yeah, grew up on a, on a muni, for sure. Dusty, yeah, it's dusty, a lot of dirt, a little bit of grass, whatever. So um, I, I remember loving the Pebble Beach, and I did a bunch of Pebble Beaches, you know, just the water. The, the, the fence on the end of it and the sunlight hitting it. So I just did it from different perspectives. So 
after about six months, I had about 40 golf drawings. Because whenever I do something, Jay, I just put my whole heart and soul into it. So I was just golf crazy then. I was just, just going in just like all day, every day, up to 10 hours, drawing golf courses. So I started reading the articles inside the magazine. All right, I don't know nothing about the sport. Well, let me read about this world. Valentino, so, let me stop you just for a minute. Seriously, yeah. you you grew up in the inner city in Buffalo, New York. There's not a golf course around. I mean, no, golf no, no, no. and you okay. and the how, how <laughs> uh, I just it's just amazing. But let me just back up just a little bit, bud. You had to have some really dark days in prison. How how did you get through? And let me say this, right? I did have some dark days. I had some tough days. I cried a lot. I buried my face in the pillow. But let me just say this. I always knew that I was blessed. And I always knew that God had a plan for me. Okay? And when you're tested in life, you don't get it. You don't get to decide what test God is going to throw at you. You know, you got to roll with it, you know, and we're all going to be tested. It could be death. It could be a death in the family. It could be a divorce. It could be a car accident. I don't know what it is. Everybody's going to have a test. You know, my test was 27 years of wrongful imprisonment. You know, so I just wanted to, you know, eventually, as I understood this, I want to be able to show people that you can overcome anything. All right. So, Pearl, I got to sit with this guy. I got to have lunch with this guy. I, I've, I've been honored to meet way too many people that I shouldn't have had to meet. This guy has got something so special about him. It's yeah, for me, it's his attitude. I mean, 100%. You could go all different directions with what he's been through, challenged with, etc. Every time you posed a question, he came right back with, but Jay, this is how I handled it. This is what was best for me. That's all about that personal growth, that edge, that next level, and that guy's got it in spades. If you would have told this guy at any time other than probably the last five years before he was freed that golf was going to play a part of his life, he would have laughed us out of the conversation. It wouldn't have even been relevant for crying out loud, and that's what's so fun about this show is how often golf plays a major part in different lives, different activities, different efforts, and it's all the time. Yep, yep, it's pretty, pretty cool, very cool. Well, we are going now to my good buddy, John Hewlett. John has worked at KC Radio here in St. Louis for 44 years. He's also been the public address announcer at the ballpark for 37 years. He and his wife, Ruth, have three daughters. He is just a great guy. Let's go listen to his. He's got a cool Alice Cooper story from our interview earlier this year. Jay Delsing's Best of 2020 is brought to you by Golden Tee. He was looking to play golf. He plays golf every day, I think it is. He says that uh, it was golf that rescued him from, from alcoholism and, 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 and drug, drug addiction, maybe. I thought, or maybe just alcoholism. But anyway, uh, he came to town. He wanted to play golf, and uh, he got hold of somebody through the radio station. And myself and my friend Mark Emo met him uh, somewhere, picked him up, and, and drove him out to Quail Creek Golf Course in South County. And Alice, Alice is a pretty decent player. You know, I would say he probably shot like 78 that day. As a matter of fact, it was 78. I got the scorecard. So afterwards, he had to get a, back down to Pizza's Records to do a, a show on top of the, uh, the record store there on Hampton and uh, Chippewa. We were running late. And so he jumped in my car and we're heading up Tesson Ferry towards 270. And the traffic backs up. So I decided I'm going to take a side route, and I made a right turn off of uh, there on maybe uh, Kennerly or something like that. And sure enough, some guy pulls out of Deerberg's parking lot and slams into the car and busts the, the front uh, axle. We weren't going anywhere. And Axel, and um, so Alice Cooper is in my car uh, <laughs> going, oh, man, I'm going to miss this show. So I called Emo, and we had to go into the Walgreens, uh, the pay phone, to, to call Emo. And while we were in there, we got a soda and some Cheetos, and we sat on the curb waiting for Mark Emo to come and pick us up and uh, took Alice Cooper down to the show. But, yeah, the, I still have this mental picture of Alice Cooper's head in the roof of my car right at impact of that accident. <laughs> and you, man, we have Alice Cooper, we have Cheetos, and we have soda. I mean, and we also have golf. I mean, we, we've got all the major uh, groups covered here. 
Yeah. Until this day, every once in a while, one of our listeners will run into him somewhere and they'll ask him about that and go, yeah, yeah, he's tired of hearing about it. Oh, I bet. You know what's interesting about Alice Cooper, John? When I've met him and talked to him, he is a highly intelligent guy, isn't he? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, Very normal, you know. He, he carved out this image of himself being, uh, you know, uh, crazy and, uh, you know, out of control. But that's just the show. And that's just the persona of Alice Cooper, the real guy, Vincent Fournier, which is his real name. He's as normal a dude as you'll find. Vincent Fournier is Alice Cooper. Oh, man, remember when School's Out, when he first released School's Out, I'm like, oh, man, School's Out, let's go play golf. <laughs> that's awesome, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's funny how we tie different songs into our past like that. But, yeah, that's, that's a good one. Okay, so all I have to say is John Hewlett, Alice Cooper, Cheetos, a car accident, <laughs> and soda. I had my brush with Alice Cooper in Scottsdale, Arizona. I was a member at Encala Golf Course. For whatever reason, Alice Cooper joined out there. He would come out with his entourage in that wild car. What was that? I don't even know what the style of that car. It was some kind of a Benz or Mercedes or whatever from vintage era. And you know what, though? They would come out and he had nothing but respect for the game. He was a really good player and a really good guy and just made it happen. But it was fun to see this guy that I had a picture of as Crazy Rocker and bottom line is, he was nothing but passionate golfer. That's right. The person he is and the persona that he per, you know portrays are far different. And uh, just a really, really cool, cool dude and um, uh, a lover of the game. And uh, and John Hewlett was just a great interview to have, and just a kind of like a St. Louis institution. I just love Hewlett's passion for what he's done, his appreciation for what he's done, and relative to golf. The way his whole family has just blended into it and and fits. It was just it was perfect for your show. Well, that's going to wrap up the on the range segment. But uh, don't go anywhere. We're going to come right back to the front nine, and uh, we've got Ozzy Smith and Adam Long. Perfect. This is golf with Jay Delsing. In these extremely trying times, the management team at Marcone would like to give a shout out to our 500 plus employees and their families. Their diligence and commitment to each other, our process, and our company are so good that we are obligated to state it publicly. We are so grateful for each and every one of you. You have all contributed to our success, and your dedication is imperative to the continued growth of our company. Thank you for your efforts. Marcone is the largest distributor of General Electric Appliance Parts in North America. Here's a shout-out of tremendous thanks to each Marcone regional sales manager, Vinny. Terry, David, Marvin, and Jeff, and their sales and service teams who keep Marcone customers stocked up and equipped with parts needed to keep their appliance service businesses humming. Thank you very much. You've seen it and played it in bars over the past 30 years, and now you can bring golden tea to your home. Complete your basement or man cave with the popular arcade game, The Ultimate Virtual Golfing Experience. Over 80 courses, unique game modes, and you can even challenge a buddy in online tournaments. However you play, you will be the talk of your neighborhood. Visit home.goldentea.com to learn more. Uh, The Dean Team Automotive Group is unbelievable. When you hear a dealer say, we have every car that you need. You know, that's kind of like, a, yeah, we'll just throw that out there. Well, these guys really do. Uh, their list includes Volkswagen, Subarus, Hyundais, Genesis. The, there's a new Volvo store. that They also have over 1,000 pre-owned cars. They also have a golf cart division where they make customized golf carts. It's really cool. We have seen those before. Mm-hmm. You can work with how fast cool. they can go. They're street legal. They can do different colors. It's not like we're jumping in a little gas cart at the Muni course that we grew up on Pearl. These things are awesome, and they are customized. So if you're interested in that, go to uh, DeanTeamGolfCarts.com. And lastly, this place, the Dean Team Auto Sports, is unbelievable. They have almost $10 million worth of automobiles at this place. I went online and was checking them out. Luxury Cars Pro, like you're familiar with, like the uh, Bugattis, the Bentleys, Ferraris, Maseratis, Lamborghinis, McLarens, Rolls Royces. So if you're looking for luxury cars, you're looking for any cars, reach out to the Dean Team and the Dean Team Automotive Group. There's five locations, uh, all on Manchester Road. Volkswagen, Subaru, and Hyundai are in Baldwin. They have a second Volkswagen location in Kirkwood. 
and in that new Volvo store, as I mentioned, in Maplewood. Uh, the golf cart shop is also in Maplewood. You can find anything you need to know about Dean Team at DeanTeam.com. Tell them Jay Delsing sent you. Grab your clubs. We're headed to the front nine on Golf with Jay Delsing. The Front Nine is brought to you by the Ascension Charity Golf Classic. And welcome back. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. I'm your host, Jay Pearly is with me, and we are on the segment we call The Front Nine. It's brought to you by the Ascension Charity Classic. It will be held at Norwood Hills Country Club in North St. Louis County this September, and I cannot wait. Is it going to be the first tournament that you play in with your new knee? I don't know. That's a good question. I would not, if I'm, you know, bolting down the fairways and feeling great on this knee, I wouldn't mind trying to sneak a tournament or two in before then. I hope you do. Yeah. I would love it. How about that? I surprise you I'm with not that gonna answer, caddy, I'm not going to caddy for a meet, but I hope the hell he does it. Could you imagine me bolting down anywhere? No, no, no I was going to leave, I was gonna leave that alone. That's insane. Um, no, that's not happening. Well, um, guys, we are doing uh, the best of 2020. None of us are too bummed that 2020 is in the rearview mirror. So uh, we had an interview in 2020 with the great, the Wizard of Oz, Ozzy Smith. So let's go and listen to what Ozzy had to say. The best of 2020 is brought to you by Golden Tee. For all the young people out there, I wasn't one of those bonus babies that signed for a lot of money. Um, but I, I held on to my dream. I held on to the dream that at some day I would make myself a, a big league ball player and just just to get the opportunity and be the best big league ball player that I could be. And, and lo and behold, I, I, I get signed by the Padres and uh, in my, I, I was there for my first four years. And then uh, Gary Templeton had some problems here in St. Louis and I certainly had some problems there in, in San Diego. So we ended up getting traded for each other and, you know, Gary was probably one of the most talented guys they ever put on a pair of spikes. You know, he um, he was a true five-two player who could hit for power, could hit for average. Um, he could run, he could throw, he did it all. And he's still the only guy in the National League to get 200 hits from each side, 100 hits from each side of the plate. So that was a lot of pressure coming to an organization such as the Cardinals you know, having to try and reprove myself over again. But here again, I believed in what I could do. I think Whitey Herzog and acquiring me believed in what I could do and felt that I could, uh, I would be the, the missing link or I was the missing link to what this organization needed. And lo and behold, 1982 was a magical year for us. And I've been here ever since. Uh, uh, the thing that is that st- stuck out in my mind, when I watched you play for, I had never seen anybody bring the sort of athleticism that you brought to the shortstop position your range was sick I mean it was crazy and the 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 way that you were able to dive get back up on your feet and all that stuff it was it, it, it just never been seen before I mean a 13-time gold glover a 15-time all-star I mean you even won the silver slugger award in 1987 that man that for from from what you just talked about in the high school you know, and and then Iowa and that whole thing is, I mean, did you ever, you had to dream though. You had to think you could do it. <laughs> no, you know, Jay, you know, it was just about being the best at whatever I chose to do. My, and my mom used to preach this and I was lucky enough that I had the, I had the people that were important in my life. They were all preaching the same message about working hard to be the best, whatever it was that I chose to do in my life. It just so happened that I realized at an early age that my hand and eye coordination would be my ticket. It was something that was very special. It was a blessing. And I never wanted that to be um, uh, something that I took for granted, you know. So I just continued to work hard at being the best baseball player that I could be. And I would let all of those other things take care of themselves as as it did. You know, my job every day was to go out there and catch and throw the baseball. Um, make as few mistakes as I possibly could, knowing that there was no such thing as perfection, which will lead us into what golf is all about <laughs> when we start talking about that. But right. that, that that's a correlation there uh, that I find in the two sports. But it was to be the very best that I could be with what I was given. 
All right, so John, when I hear Ozzie Smith talk about his commitment to baseball, his hand-eye coordination in baseball, and all these other things, and I start thinking about it in golf, whoa. I When I hear him talk, and I think of all the years I got to watch him run out on the field and do a flip, not and I wasn't necessarily, I'm a, I'm a Cubs fan, sorry, I wasn't necessarily St. Louis. We'll cut that later, mate. <laughs> we take that out? <laughs> yeah. Come on, come on, come on. The fact that I'm on a radio show and you're interviewing him and we're going through this, I absolutely love that. And what a fun guy and a passionate guy and a guy that came up through the ranks that you and I can both relate to relative to coming up to the rings in golf. Yeah, absolutely. And how about, you know, uh, just his story is terrific. I mean, he went to high school with Eddie Murray. Two Hall of Famers on the same. Come on. How does that ever happen? How do you go out? Eddie Murray. So let's liken Eddie Murray to golf. How do you go out and and strike the ball well every day? I know. There's about two guys like that that we can think of. I know. Who who the hell can you say can do that? And, you know, part of the part problem with uh with Ozzy when you're around a guy like that you're thinking well how can I compete if this guy's doing this but he hung with it and and did it and did it and did it well, and found his own way exactly Pearl and you couldn't find two different players Ozzy was almost ballerina like he was just For sure effortless his range was sick at shortstop Eddie Murray was a very good defender but he was clubbing the ball strong powerful left-handed batter and uh oh man what else can you say had a great career in Baltimore. All right. Uh, up next, our St. Louis buddy, Adam Long. What a fun interview this is. Let's go talk to recent PGA Tour winner, Adam Long. The best of 2020 is brought to you by Golden Tee. You were born in New Orleans but grew up here in St. Louis. In, in 2008, you won the Metropolitan Amateur Championship, and you went to the University of Duke, uh, Duke University, and uh, which is just a – a phenomenal, uh, you know, place to go get a degree and had a good golf program. And then you turned pro in 2010 and you kind of kicked it around the mini tours for a little bit. Right. Yeah. Um, we had a, you know, I grew up in St. Louis and grew up playing Whitmore country club and then old Hickory and then wing Haven for a bit and Lake forest more recently. And, uh, so we moved around a little bit and, and in the suburbs there in St. St. Louis, St. Charles and, went to Francis Howell and we had some good, good high school teams there and um, was playing national events growing up, you know, since I was probably 11 years old and um, just kept getting a little bit better and, and eventually ended up at Duke. And, you know, we weren't uh, the UCLA teams of your past, but we were some pretty good, uh, we had some pretty good guys on our team. And we had, we had a good four years there and, um, you know, turned pro, like you said, in 2010 and, um, qualified for the u.s open in 2011 and that was kind of an eye-opener for me and taught me kind of two things one that the best players in the world aren't perfect and i was probably closer than i I thought i was to to those guys but uh you know it took me a few years but i I ended up playing the the, well it was the nationwide web.com corn fairy tour in 2012 and lost my card pretty easily i didn't have a very good year out there but um you know, I, I played the mini tours, e-golf tour, Hooters tour, Latin America, Canada. I played them all, it seemed like, um, for a few years and got back onto the Corn Ferry tour in 2015 and then uh, played another four years out there and finally finally able to get my card in uh, 2018. So um, it took me a little bit longer than I wanted to, but uh, it all worked out. You know, Adam, let's talk a little bit about that progression, though, because um, most people go, oh, Adam Long, this overnight success, you know, and and Mm -hmm. we know that there is no such thing really as an overnight success. Like you said, the Wolves and Marikawas, Mm -hmm. they may have more uh, immediate uh, impact and success on the PGA Tour, but man, this thing's a marathon. This is not a sprint, but... Talk a little bit about the progression that you saw in your game. You just mentioned the U.S. Open, and then getting out on the Corn Ferry, the the nationwide. It, it's a it's a phenomenal place to figure it out, isn't it? Yeah, uh, exactly. I think all those tours taught me something. Um, I learned right away how to kind of travel on my own in college. Everything's kind of set up for you. This is your schedule. This is when we're leaving for the airport. This is what we're going to wear every day. I mean, literally everything's pretty much laid out for you. You just have to go play. 
and then you turn pro and you got to figure out your own schedule. You're in charge of your travel, you, where you stay, how you get from one tournament to another or a Monday qualifier, when, how you kind of organize all that um, is all up to you. Uh, submitting an entry fee or signing up for events, all of it. And it's all on you. And so you've got to figure it all out. And, you know, going out on your own, it, it teaches you that. It teaches you how to play four rounds of competitive golf. Um, it teaches you the ups and downs of missing cuts. And, you know, in college, you don't miss cuts. And so it teaches you all of that and how to bounce back from the, the bad weeks and get better. And um, so, I, yeah, I, you know, I kind of learned a bit on my own. I had Brian Fote there in St. Louis by my side the whole way. And um, I would work with him when I went through St. Louis. But it, it teaches you really you got to kind of learn on the fly a bit. And, uh, yeah, the, the Corn Ferry Tour was great. I played, you know, four or five years out there that were, were all really good. It taught me a lot and they're set up the exact same way as the PGA tour, as far as committing to events and you know, how their run is all the same. Um, they're just different area, different uh, countries or even, you know, you're tra traveling in South America, you're traveling around all over the place, but uh, it's, it's a great learning experience and uh, it teaches you everything you need to know for the most part. But um, there, there is no substitute for the PGA tour. Um, they're, they're great breeding grounds, but you get there under the gun on the PGA tour and you've got crowds that you've never seen before. And you got these cameras all over you. It's uh, it is a bit different, but uh, those are definitely good stepping stones to get there. Yeah, that's really well said. So Adam, this is so cool. So you, you made one cut out of your first four events, I think, and then you turn <laughs> around and win the desert classic in Palm Springs at PGA West. You made an unbelievable birdie on 18, uh, which I have been where you hit your tee shot off to the right, but I did not follow my tee shot up with it nearly as good a second shot or putt as you did. And it was so fun to watch you kind of stick it in Philly Mick's ear. Um, Adam Hadwick was in the last group there too. Talk us through the last little bit of that back nine, but because I watched you hold that putt on 18 and I said to my buddy, John Perlis, who does a show with me, this thing is going straight in the center of the hole. And he goes, how do you know? I go, I can just tell you look so locked in. The The stage wasn't too big, and it looked like it just was your time. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I, the whole last day was – it kind of went fast for me for sure. I mean, it was my first time in the final group, obviously, and you're playing with one of the best players in history in Phil Mickelson, and Adam Hadwin, you know, a star in his own right. So – it was, uh, you know, a lot to, to accept there going into the round, but I really just kept, kept my cool and just wanted to have fun and enjoy it and laugh with my caddy and just enjoy the whole experience was really my goal. I didn't think I was going to win. I wasn't trying to win when I teed off on, on Sunday. I was trying to have fun. I was trying to hit, keep playing great golf. I mean, I was like 19 under for the first uh, three rounds. Like I, clearly I was playing great golf, making a lot of birdies, just keep doing that stuff. And keep giving my some giving myself chances and keep knocking putts in and that's basically what I did. Um uh, I still made the turn. I was still back with Hadwin by three, I believe. And um so there was still a lot of work to do. I thought one of those two guys was probably gonna win. They've won before. Phil's won forty events or whatever. I mean like clearly uh you know I'm not gonna win this thing. But I just wanted to keep having fun. I needed the top ten to even get into the next week at, at, at the farmers and Tory. So I, I was mostly playing for that, but honestly, just trying to stay in the moment and enjoy it. And literally all of a sudden we're on 18 T and all three of us are tied. And that's when it kind of changed. Like, all right, I've, I've done it. Like I've succeeded. It's been a successful day. I've got my top 10. I'm in the next week. I'm going to make a bunch of points, a bunch of money. Like let's, let's just see where this thing goes. And uh, a little conservative off the tee, <laughs> um, the water left to hit it right. And it ended up somehow on the downslope of this mogul, out there and uh not exactly what i was looking for but um it was just one of those shots where i was just had to turn into an athlete and and i couldn't think about okay ball below my feet it's going to want me to hit it right but it's easy to pull these as well and you know this is we're tied and these guys are i'm hitting first those guys are going to be flagging it close too i need to be aggressive it wasn't really any of that it was like all right i'm playing great golf um i need to just be an athlete about this and you've hit this, a shot like this, you know, a hundred times before. It's nothing crazy. And uh, I just went right at it. And, you know, I was probably aiming, what, 10 feet right of the flag or whatever and pulled it right at it. <laughs> so I was happy to, to see that it was going right at the flag and uh, pretty good distance as well. So 
And uh, all of a sudden, I had a chance to win the golf tournament uh, with about 13 feet, I think it was. Um, but same thing, I went through what I've been feeling since Thursday of, you know, my putting stroke feels good. I've been reading the greens great and just wanted to pretend it was a putt on Thursday rather than uh, Sunday to win a tournament. And, and I went, you know, it did go through my mind, like as soon as Phil and Hadwin had both missed their opportunities that, okay, this is to win the tournament, but I only let myself think that for a second. And then it went into like, okay, this is, this doesn't really matter. It's the same thing I've been thinking, just roll the putt and uh, the darn thing went in. Okay, so John, one of my favorites, favorite parts about what Adam brought up was his journey, the way that this thing is broken out for him. You know, he's he talked about Matthew Wolf, he talked about Victor Hovland, he talked about uh, Colin Morikawa, and how they kind of came out of school and boom, you know, it just started happening for him. Not the case for him. Not the case for most people. Right. That's why I think this story is absolutely phenomenal. And what I love about him. He keeps popping up. Yes. Here he is. Here he is. He's got to win. He makes this happen. He makes this happen. The guy is constantly in the hunt. He's building his confidence. Just an absolutely great story. It's the way most things happen. I was just texting him, bro, uh, the night before the Mayacoma event okay. down in Mexico. Okay. He had the lead. He had the, or no. Well, he was in there, whatever well, it, was. it was. close. It was very close. Maybe not. It was close. He was in the top. It's, it's the J. Dels- Golf exactly. of J. Dels- it's he close was in the good. top five. Exactly. And and we had some some uh, really fun texting going back and forth. And he wound up finishing in the top five. But you, a good and, finish. you and I talk about this. I mean, you can look at Nick Faldo. He used to be called Nick Foldo. You can look at... Tom Kite. Tom Kite, con- considered a choker. Tom Watson. How about consi- the great Payne Stewart? Considered a choker. Payne Stewart can't get over the hump. We all forget that when they start winning. The fact is, those guys went through the blood, sweat, and tears to get to that point. And I think we need to remember that, whether it's golf, whether it's our careers, whether it's our families. you got to go through those times. Absolutely. Well, that's going to wrap up the front nine, but don't go anywhere. we got Bob Costas and Bubba Watson's caddy Ted Scott coming up on the back nine. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. Are your workouts more fun than this? Well, if they are, then I want to sign you to an endorsement deal with Michelob Ultra. I'm looking for anyone and everyone who makes working out a blast. If that's you, hit to TeamUltra.com for chances for awesome perks like Team Ultra gear and more. That's TeamUltra.com to enter. No purchase necessary. Open U.S. residents 21 plus. See official rules at TeamUltra.com. Message data rates may apply. Always look prohibited. Enjoy responsibly. 80 Michelob Ultra Lighter St. Louis, Missouri. When things come out of left field, having a game plan matters. Farmers Insurance has over 90 years of experience helping people play through every stage of the game. We've seen almost everything, so we know how to cover almost anything. Talk to Farmers Agent Ed Fogelbach at 314-398-0101 to see how they can help you stay in the game. That's Ed Fogelbach at 314-398-0101. We are Farmers. USA Mortgage is doing it again. Joe Schieser and his staff have lowered rates again this month, and they will waive closing costs if you want to refinance to get cash out, lower your rate, shorten your term, or eliminate that costly, unnecessary mortgage insurance. If you are purchasing a property, they can issue a pre-approval letter within minutes. They are the largest mortgage company in the state of Missouri, and their volume allows them to quote the lowest rates. Don't waste your time with the national online brokers. USA Mortgage is employee-owned and operated right here in St. Louis. Joe Schieser has closed over $500 million in loans in nearly 30 years in the business and over $2 million alone to Delsing's. I want to tell you about a strength training fitness program that helped me and that can help you. It's called 20 Minutes to Fitness. They have two locations, one in Clayton and one in Chesterfield. Every time you go to the gym with 20 Minutes to Fitness, you work with a professional trainer. They take you through specific machines and with specific exercises that are designed to help your golf game. We're talking about strength, flexibility, and those two components are huge to help you improve your game. Visit 20minutestofitness.com. Your first session is absolutely free. Get off the couch and get in shape. 
Don't miss the hottest rookie class in PGA Tour Champions history. Stars like Phil Mickelson, Ernie Els, Jim Furyk, and more compete at Norwood Hills Country Club September 6th through the 12th. Join legends Jack Nicholas, Tom Watson, and Hale Irwin to celebrate the PGA Tour Champions' newest event. Professional golf returning to St. Louis in 2021. The Ascension Charity Classic presented by Emerson. Tickets, clubhouse passes, hospitality suites, pro-am foursomes on sale now. Visit ascensioncharityclassic.com. Okay, so you and your family are looking to join a country club. Well, I need to recommend to you Whitmore Country Club. They've got 90 holes of golf in the membership out there. You have access to the Missouri Bluffs, the Links of Dardeen, the Golf Club of Wentzville, and all the cart fees are already included in your membership. There's no food or beverage minimums and no assessments. My friend Bummer in the golf shop is a phenomenal guy. You've got to go out and check him out. He and the staff out there run golf leagues, skins games, members tournaments, couples events, Available all year round. There's a kids club in the main clubhouse, and they have a huge fitness center. There's three tennis courts if you're not into golf, a gigantic pool for you and your family to use. Year-round social calendar is spectacular. There's holiday parties, picnics, date nights, always have live music, and much, much more. If you're looking for a family-friendly, safe place to hang out, you got to check out Whitmore Country Club. Call them at 636-926-9622. We're halfway there. It's time for the Back Nine on Golf with Jay Delsey. Welcome back. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. I'm your host, Jay. I got my favorite caddy, Pearly, with me. Brad Barnes is taking great care of us here at the ESPN studios. We are headed to the Back Nine. Um, okay, John, Ted Scott, great guy. I don't, Ladies and gentlemen, if you are into social media, you got to check out Ted Scott on, on Twitter. He is just a hoot. He had some, um, well, let's just go to his interview and then we'll talk about it. This is Ted Scott, who now caddies for Bubba Watson. Jay Delsing's Best of 2020 is brought to you by Golden Tee. Kind of a freak accident the way that I got into uh, caddying, and foosball was the same. When I was in uh, college, my uh, my neighbor owned a pool hall, and I would go in there at night and shoot pool and stuff. And every Monday and Thursday, I would hear these people in the back of the room just screaming and hollering, you know, over this game that I had seen played before as a kid. And I was like, you know, what, why is there so many people back there? What are they doing? And my ADD, I guess, kicked in. Of what, what's going on over there? Well, so I had to go see. <laughs> and uh, when I got there, I was just amazed at the ball control they had and how competitive it looked, and so much fun. So I just. Same, same philosophy. I just said, excuse me, I stopped the guy on the show. Said, who can teach me how to do this? And he said, well, probably the guy that runs the tournament. So I walked over to him. I said, how are you doing? My name's Ted. I want to learn how to do this. It looks fun. What do I need to do to get lessons? And he said, we'll play in my tournament every Monday and Thursday. I said, well, how much is that? He said, $5. I said, I'm in. So uh, he was a state champion. And from day one, I had perfect fundamentals. So it'd be almost like a, a great golfer teaching you exactly how to grip it, you know, stand. And you had never seen golf really played like that before. So just had really good fundamentals, and I fell in love with it. You know, I'm kind of like every kind of game, sport, anything hand eye is fun for me, and I can get into it. I've never met a game that I didn't like. Is that one yet? So, uh, so that's how I ended up doing football, and that's how I ended up playing golf at Mid Caddy. I mean, it was just strictly by trying to get better by spending time with people that are better than me. And Ted, how cool was it? You start caddying, you meet Grant Wade. Grant has an unbelievable season. And you guys are going toe to toe with Tiger Woods at Glen Abbey up at the Canadian Open. Yeah, it was really strange. You know, I went from uh, for those that might have heard the story of my first day on the job, we were on the tenth tee and didn't have a yardage book, and to three <laughs> months later standing there with Tiger Woods' greatest season, um, you know, hitting what many people think is his best shot, you know, he's ever hit, um, to beat us by one, you know, and. Grant hit 17 greens in regulation that day. The only one he missed, he was about 12 feet away on the fringe. And, uh, you know, just a strike show between him and Tiger, a battle back and forth. And he made one more putt than us, and that's that's where the end, you know, the one-stroke victory came. But uh, that was just amazing. It was very surreal to stand there, you know, trying to start caddying just to learn something. So three months later, spending time with the greatest player ever beating us was pretty fun. You know, if you can take a loss and enjoy it, I'd say that was a pretty good one. So, Ted, that shot that Tiger hit from the right fairway bunker at 18, was there anybody else on tour at that time you think would have pulled, could have pulled that off? 
Well, interestingly enough, Grant actually was hitting the exact same irons on the par threes that day. Uh, you know, so so I think, you know, the power that Grant had, you know how fit he is, and he was super strong. And he was pretty long back then. Um, and I think with adrenaline, you know, he could have he could have hit that shot. Um, but I think just the fact that, that Tiger was aiming so aggressive possibly is what most of us wouldn't do. I think for me personally, I would have definitely hit way left and missed the water. Just, just oh, oh Ted, for me, that back bunker, I would have been all over that back bunker. <laughs> that's, absolutely. I would have said, let's see if we can get it on the green from that back bunker plugged in the back lip. Yeah, you know, Ted, the, the right but, club's uh, probably a six iron, and I would have probably taken a five. <laughs> yeah, 100%. I mean, when Grant asked me, Grant hit six iron from the middle of the fairway, and, uh, and he's, uh, sorry, five iron, he was 220 back then, he had, he had five iron, and, uh, you know, when he asked me, I was like, uh, okay. You know, but he was just so pumped up in that moment. And, um, you know, Tiger was about six yards closer at that six iron. So, you know, you know what it's like when you get adrenaline. These guys, you know, they hit it far already. And when they get pumped up and the situation's on the line, you know, you can hit it almost as far as you want. So it's almost distances are irrelevant at times. And that that can't be easy to caddy for. I mean, you're almost, especially with who you've got now, Ted, I've never, ever – encountered a player like Bubba Watson. He is so creative and hit some of the, I'm just going to call them wild or craziest shots I've ever seen. Yeah, you know, I definitely have the best ticket in golf, you know. Um, 14 years together, there's not a week that goes by that I just I, I just kind of look at him and just go, man, that's that's freakish, you know. That's just nuts what you just did, you know. And, uh, and not to say some other players can't do it, it's just the fact that he does some of that stuff in the middle of the fairway, which doesn't make sense, you know. <laughs> so, a lot of fun, a lot of talent, you know, not a not a real big uh, practicer in the sense of normal way of going about it, you know. I mean, Bubba doesn't go to the range, you know, hardly ever. Um, you know, he just he likes to go play golf and if he goes to the range, typically he'll he'll end up by the end of ten minute or fifteen minute session getting bored and take his three iron out and start trying to hit it to the fifty yard flag, to the hundred yard flag, one twenty, one eighty, the two hundred and the three hundred, you know, he's just hitting all kinds of shots to it because he just likes to play the game and be creative and not, and not try to worry about having, you know, what many would call a perfect looking swing. You know, it's like, Hey, what, what gets the job done? So very unique approach in today's, in today's game. You know, I think it's a little bit different um, today with all the coaching and track man information and flight scope and, you know, the quad, there's so many different things out there that, that people, um, you know, can gather information from and, and 3d analysis and, you know, that you can really get bogged down in the details of a one second endeavor you know, if it takes us one second to swing a golf club, there's a lot of stuff, you, a lot of information out there about that one second. But, you know, that just shows you how complex the movements are to create the desired ball flight. And, um, you know, Bubba, just the genius of who he is is he doesn't think about any of that stuff. You know, he just kind of almost Sam Snedish, you know, I think fade and it fades, I think draw and it draws. So it's, it's a fun, exciting way to play the game, I'm sure something that I've never really done, played golf like that. and uh, But it's even more fun to caddy for someone like that, just knowing that day-to-day he's pretty much going to have his, his A game, you know, physically. It's just all about how he's thinking. All right, Pearl. I don't know. I, I, I'm a huge fan of Ted Scott's, but I loved listening to him talk about coming down the stretch when he was caddying for Grant Waite before he worked with, for, uh, for Bubba and playing with Tiger at Glen Abbey. And that last hole where Tiger had his drive in the right-hand bunker and blasted that iron over the green and birdied 18 to win the thing and beat Grant by a stroke. Oh, man, that was just – that. I remember watching that and going, this is just phenomenal. One of the best shots that we will ever see in our lives. I mean, you were on tour a long time. You played with great players. Seriously, did you see too many shots better than that? No, no. It, uh, the, the line that he took was so – it's hard to even explain. I mean, did he mean to take that line? I don't know. I was going to say he probably pushed it a little bit, but nonetheless, it 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 it's the line that he got. Yep. You know what I mean? And so um, Grant Wade was such a great player. A little bit maybe into his mechanics. You yep. know, probably an understatement. But he had this shot right there, and he's probably thinking, "Tiger over there, this isn't going to happen." And all of a sudden, it happened. Yep. Yeah. I it, didn't know Ted was uh, uh, Grant's caddy at that time. Yeah, he was, and um, 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 he's also. The world champion football player, you know, he's just he's just a really interesting <laughs> but guy. But that fits being Bubba's caddy. Yeah, the the the, the way that everything is yes. is kind of broken out. It's just uh, terrific, and Ted is just a a terrific guy. All right, so our last best of. 
We've got a bunch of cuts because the interview was so fun to do. The great Bob Costas. World class. World class. Let's listen to Bob. Jay Delsing's Best of 2020 is brought to you by Golden Tee. I'm looking at your accomplishments, man, and I just cannot believe the sports spectrum that you've covered in your career. I mean... I guess we could start in 1974 when you got to come to St. Louis. I'm assuming, you know, you're a kid that grew up in Queens and that you had never been to St. Louis before. I had never set foot in St. Louis until October of 1974. I was in Syracuse where I went to college. I had gotten my first job a year before doing minor league hockey in the Eastern Hockey League for $30 a game and $5 a day meal money on the road while I was still a student at Syracuse. The only thing I really knew about St. Louis was the Cardinals and the fact that I could sometimes pick up KMOX if the signal was clear enough on the right night. And I could listen to Harry Carey and Jack Buck. And by the mid seventies, it was just Jack because Harry had left. So I was excited to have an interview at KMOX for the chance to be the voice of the spirits and maybe to meet Jack Buck. But I thought, hey, I'm 22 years old. I have a very thin resume. There's almost no way in the world I'm going to get this job. But lo and behold, I did. And so when I came to St. Louis for the interview, I'm thinking this is the one and only time for the foreseeable future I'll be in this town. And what do I know about this town? I know the Cardinals, and I know that Stan Musial has a restaurant. At least he did then for many years called Musial and Biggie's. So I went, after the interview with Mr. Highland and with Jack Buck, I went to New Zealand Biggies by myself. And this is 1974. And all I had was a hamburger and maybe a Coke. And the bill was maybe 10 bucks. And I didn't even have any credit cards then. All I had was a little bit of cash. And as the tip, after paying the bill, I left three singles, a quarter, a nickel, and a penny. $3.31. <laughs> in honor of Stan Musial's lifetime batting average of 331. I'm sure the waiter was puzzled, but I'm thinking I'm never going to set foot here again. So I go back to Syracuse, and a couple of days later, Mr. Highland calls me, and what do you know? I've got the job, and I'm back in Syracuse a couple of weeks after – I'm back in St. Louis, rather, a couple of weeks after that, embarking upon my career with KMOX. And, Bob, what a ph- phenomenal career you've had. But one of the things as a kid, I can remember listening to you call the St. Louis Spirits games and Fly Williams, the three-point line, you know, the yep. colored ball, all of those really fun things as a, you know, as a kid. I grew up in North County and loved sports. But hearing your voice, the passion that you had when you called basketball was phenomenal. Well, you know, I was a kid. That's part of it. I was a kid starting out on his first really big broadcasting adventure. I was at KMOX. I understood the prestige and the history of the station. I understood that I was working with Jack Buck and with Dan Kelly and other legendary broadcasters on a station where Harry Carey and Joe Garagiola and others had worked. <clears throat> and I was a small part of that. So I was all, I was all psyched up anyway. And, of course, basketball is a fast-paced sport. And I guess I just let it rip. Yeah, absolutely. And you, you became part of this tremendous roster of unbelievable broadcasters that this little flyover city, as we're called sometimes, has had. The, the people that have come through here have been just phenomenal. Oh, absolutely. Hall of Fame broadcasters. Uh, you think about all the people that have been associated primarily with St. Louis that are in the baseball broadcasters hall of fame, the broadcasters wing in Cooperstown or various other broadcasting halls of fame, bold faced names. There has never been a radio station. And this is a considered opinion, never been a radio station more influential or better in quality than KMOX over the course of decades, more dominant in the ratings and more respected in every way. And it's only a small exaggeration to say that, especially in sports, we had a roster of people there that could have stocked the network's entire sports department. Oh, there's no question. I had Jay Randolph Sr. on 
oh, uh, gosh, a couple of months ago, Bob, and he talked about, you know, the Gary Benders of the world and some of those guys that, yep. you know, because we had the big red back then. And, oh, man, as a kid, you know, you just don't appreciate it. As I'm older now and I've been fortunate to be in sports, I'm like, man, St. Louis has just got a, a first-class seat that takes – you know, it doesn't have to take anything uh, from any other city in terms of our broadcasters. Yeah, even Dan Deardorff began broadcasting at KMOX when he was still an active player with the football Cardinals and went on from there to a terrific career on network television calling football. All right, so so John, just just the fact that he knew what Stan Musial's um, lifetime batting average of three thirty one is, and to leave that tip and everything, oh man, it's just fantastic, but that's going to wrap up the back nine. Don't go anywhere. we got more Bob Casas on the Michelob Ultra 19th hole. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. The management team at Marcone would like to give a shout-out to our 500-plus employees and their families. Their diligence and commitment to each other, our process, and our company are so good that we are obligated to state it publicly. We are so grateful for each and every one of you. You have all contributed to our success, and your dedication is imperative to the continued growth of our company. Thank you for your efforts. Marcone is the largest distributor of General Electric appliance parts in North America. Here's a shout out of thanks to the Marcone customer service team nationwide. Every day helping thousands of Marcone customers find the parts they need to keep America's home appliances washing, drying, baking, and cooking right into the holidays. Marcone Supply wishing everyone happy holidays and a prosperous 2021. You've seen it and played it in bars over the past 30 years, and now you can bring golden tea to your home. Complete your basement or man cave with the popular arcade game, the ultimate virtual golfing experience. Over 80 courses, unique game modes, and you can even challenge a buddy in online tournaments. However you play, you will be the talk of your neighborhood. Visit home.goldentea.com to learn more. USA Mortgage is doing it again. Joe Schieser and his staff have lowered rates again this month, and they will waive closing costs if you want to refinance to get cash out, lower your rate, shorten your term, or eliminate that costly, unnecessary mortgage insurance. If you are purchasing a property, they can issue a pre-approval letter within minutes. They are the largest mortgage company in the state of Missouri, and their volume allows them to quote the lowest rates. Don't waste your time with the national online brokers. USA Mortgage is employee-owned and operated right here in St. Louis. Joe Schieser has closed over $500 million in loans in nearly 30 years in the business and over $2 million alone to Delsing's. Professional golf returns to St. Louis in 2021. The Ascension Charity Classic, presented by Emerson. Stars like Phil Mickelson, Ernie Els, Jim Furyk, and more compete at Norwood Hills Country Club, September 6th through the 12th. Tickets, clubhouse passes, hospitality suites, and pro-am foursomes are on sale now. All proceeds go to North St. Louis County Charities. Visit ascensioncharityclassic.com or call 314-938-2828. PGA Tour Golf is back in the loo. The Ascension Charity Classic. When things come out of left field, having a game plan matters. Farmers Insurance has over 90 years of experience helping people play through every stage of the game. We've seen almost everything, so we know how to cover almost anything. Talk to Farmers Agent Ed Fogelbach at 314-398-0101 to see how they can help you stay in the game. That's Ed Fogelbach at 314-398-0101. We are farmers. Bum, ba, dum, bum, 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 bum. Grab your friends, a cold one, and pull up a chair. We're on to the 19th hole on golf with Jay Delsing. The 19th hole is brought to you by Michelob Ultra. Well, thanks for staying with us. This is Golf with Jay Delsing, and we are at the favorite, our favorite part of the show, the 19th hole brought to you by Michelob Ultra. Um, so we're doing the best of. And we are at the very back end of this. We've got two more clips with the great Bob Costas. So let's just go to this first clip now. This is Bob Costas. The best of 2020 is brought to you by Golden Tee. I just finished watching The Last Dance, and I think the la- the 10th episode of that great series was uh, basically uh, – Six championship for the Bulls in Game Seven, and it was just a spectacular call, and what a great ending! And you did exactly what you, what you just said. 
Well, it was so dramatic uh, that you say to yourself, at certain points, there's nothing I can do to add to this or enhance it in any way. It speaks for itself, so let me get out of the way until it's time for me to come back in. But when it came to that last dance season in 98, the Bulls as a team and also Michael Jordan as an individual, I was aware, as I think anybody would be over the course of the season, that this was more than just an NBA championship, more than just a really exciting conclusion to a final. It was something bigger than that. And the proof is that it resonates 22 years later. People were drawn to the last dance and really interested in it. So I knew in the moment that this was something different. And I was able to say a few things that acknowledge that and that still, I guess, play pretty well 22 years later. Oh, wonderfully well. Bob, is that the sport fan in you? Is that the true kid that as a sports fan, obviously you're polished and you're aware of the situation, but you're a fan of the, uh, of, of the games, aren't you? Yes, and I hope that that comes through. I think it naturally comes through better when you're younger and you have to guard against uh, sort of world, world weariness, been there, done that, seen it all. You've never really seen it all. That's part of the appeal of sports. It's a drama without a script. You can walk into a, an arena or onto the golf course or into a stadium and see something, no matter how many events you've been to, see something that you've never seen before. You don't know when, you don't know if, but it, it could happen. And you always have to be open to that and always have to be willing to respond, at least in part, like a fan, like a kid. But as you said, with, with the craftsmanship, you hope, of an experienced professional. All right, Pearl, what is the main, what is your main takeaway when you hear a guy like Bob Costas talk about this? He is passionate about what he does to his core. That, to me, is what what matters. And who doesn't want that? That's why, to me, he's successful, if you will, brilliant, if you like him. Uh, But that's, that's at his core. He knows what it is. He's passionate about it. And that's why every time the guy speaks, uh, it's interesting to listen to him. Well, I got to tell you what I, I loved how we talked about the Olympics and how he would always, you know, he's like, I don't want to insult my audience. I know that we've got to talk about I'm in Beijing. We're in a communist country. We are, you know, and he, and he did it in such a way that it never ever took away from the event. I mean, he talked about the he, he got the game 7 call for the last dance, you know, the sixth championship for the Chicago Bulls. And you know, that that's a fine balancing act pearl to to give Michael Jordan and the Bulls their due but also be able to say something poignant or something that's that that matters. And man, he just seems to be perfect at it. Absolutely. It, it's just it's just, it's just fun. You've had Jim Nance on here. I think he's similar relative to understanding the moment, and clearly Costas understands the moment. Well, that's going to wrap up another show. Um, man, 2021. Come on, man. We Bring are ready on. for some great stuff. We're ready to get a I love what Dan back Rooney said about 2021. It's going to be big things. It's going to be great things. It's going to be kind of a bit of a new awakening we both want that. We all want that. Absolutely. So this is Golf with Jay Delsing. Come back next week. We've got Vince Gill. Can Bring it on. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. Hit him straight, St. Louis. That was Golf with Jay Delsing, brought to you by Whitmore Country Club. Tune in next Sunday for more from Jay, John, and the other pros and experts from the golf world. In the meantime, you can find all of Jay's shows at 101ESPN.com as well as at jdelsinggolf.com.